This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on them in a bit. Between my phone and my laptop, I spend a majority of my day in a virtual environment. My virtual home, if you will. And although I think it's so important to be paying attention to organization in terms of our physical environment, because any chaos happening in our homes can definitely have an impact on the chaos in our brains, I argue our digital environments need some organization care too. So that's what I want to do today, is kind of give my digital spaces a little bit of a reset. If you follow along with my channel, then you know that last year, I read Building a Second Brain and I really love this book. I think it was one of the first books that I read that really tackled digital organization in a way that went beyond just organizing all of your downloads into files by date. This book really provided a fresh take on how to organize your digital spaces in a way that not only allows you to organize the content you already have, but also make sure that everything that you're saving is something that you can eventually practically use in the future. So many things I keep on my laptop and on my phone that I think I'm keeping for future self, but because I I can't properly access them when I need that information, they end up getting lost very deep within my devices. Tiago really looks at digital environments as a way to build a second brain, to get all this information in here transferred into a digital format so that, that information can actually have value in the future for you. I'll have a link to the book down in the description box below. It is absolutely worth checking out. It's not too long either. Instead of organizing ideas according to where they come from, from, I recommend organizing them according to where they are going specifically. The true test of whether a piece of knowledge is valuable is not whether it is perfectly organized and neatly labeled, but whether it can have impact on someone or something that matters to you. He says, the goal is not to use a single software platform like Notion or Milano, Google Drive, etc., etc., but to use a single organizing system that can provide you consistency even as you're navigating different platforms and apps. And what does that organize? organizing system look like, he says to use the para system, where all the information that you download or intake as you navigate your day gets organized into four different categories. Project, area, resource, and archive. Projects are anything in your life or work life that have a beginning, middle, and end. They have a specific outcome, something that you're trying to achieve. And they're typically things that you're working on in your life or in your work life in the short term. Within areas, you can have different categories like health, fitness, legal, finances. These are ongoing areas in your life that you wanna maintain, but they don't really have a specific objective. Resources are any of those things that are topics of interest that you think might be usable in the future. And archives are all those things that you can kind of put on the back burner. You don't wanna get rid of that information, but it's not super relevant. Now this all sounded really great in concept to me because I could just imagine in the future if I'm looking for a piece of information or a document for for my home that I know to go into areas, check out my home folder, and it'd probably be somewhere in there. However, I have a lot of files right now on my laptop and the idea of going through all of them right now and organizing them into this really specific system feels or felt uh, very daunting until I saw this piece of advice that Tiago also brings up in the book to just archive everything currently on your computer. So basically plop all your files into an archive folder. They're still searchable, you can still find them if you need them, but then you can just start from this moment in time using the Paris system. I love this because digital organization can be really tedious and boring. Let's be real. You're just opening files and checking what it is, deleting it, sorting it, and it's just it's just boring work. So if you can just kind of have a shortcut to starting the organization now, I feel like it makes it so much more encouraging to continue and to start fresh with a blank slate, almost like you've got a fresh new device. So that's what I wanna do right now. I'm gonna archive everything and by archive, I'm just gonna put it into its own folder. I'm gonna go to my binder window, open a new folder called archive. What month are we in? April, April 2023. And I'm gonna take this entire downloads window and just plop it into that folder. Wow, see, doesn't that look so clean and fresh? I love that. So now I'm gonna make my other folders 
my para folders. One for projects, one for areas, one for resources, and I already have an archive one, but I'm gonna do a general archive folder and plop this guy right in there. So now I just got four folders and everything that comes into my desktop from here on out that isn't in one of those folders I know I need to sort. In the areas folder, I specifically wanna start some folders for things like home warranties or invoices for purchases in the home. Work, there's gonna be a finances tab. I'll do a memories tab for any family or personal photos, videos. Within work, I know one of the things I always need are assets, like some of those assets I use all the time in every single video. So for example, at the end of this video, there's an end screen little video that I always have to go hunting for. And I'd rather just have those in one spot so digital assets invoices important documents that's my areas tab right now one of the projects that i really need to tackle this spring is my closet revamp that's definitely a project with a beginning middle and end now although i did say i wasn't going to go through my old archive this is something i want to slowly tackle but today I wanna do one thing, which is get rid of all of the music that I have, royalty free music I have downloaded onto my computer. Because every time I have a new video, I just download the new track and I have duplicates of so many tracks on here. They all have ES in the name. I'm grabbing all those and I'm moving them to the trash. Excellent. If you are trying to free up some space on your computer, at least on a Mac device, I always recommend going into about this Mac, getting the storage, seeing how much storage you have free. I still have seven. 128 gigs available on this computer which is good but I don't want it to get to the point where I'm almost at two terabytes full of stuff on here so I do have to go back and delete some things but I love going to the manage section and seeing exactly where all that storage is happening where specifically so as you can see documents I have nearly 200 gigabytes which also includes videos and photos so I know that's eating up a lot of that storage but I love the large files feature that allows me to see which files on my computer are taking up the most space because usually just by going through this section alone I can free up a good amount of storage like this is a screen recording from 2021 I'm gonna delete that this screen recording from 2022 1.61 gigabytes delete and then I can go through each of these videos and delete any that I no longer need this is as far as I'm gonna go for deleting things today but this is one of those things that you can do while watching TV uh, instead of mindlessly scrolling on TikTok or Instagram like I do a lot of the times, this can be something that adds a little productivity to your, your TV watching session. We need to have a quick little chat about Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that has made starting, designing, and updating a site of my own so easy. The internet is filled with opportunities for you to create a career on your own terms, build a loyal following, and or find like-minded people that also share your passion for DIY face masks or latte art. Creating a blog of your own can be a great starting point for your online journey. Squarespace helps make starting as pain-free as possible by offering a wide selection of gorgeous templates to choose from that can help make your website look clean and professional. After choosing your template, you then are free to customize things even further by changing each template's fonts, colors, page layouts, and more. I especially love how easy it is for me to navigate from page to page on my website so I can make updates quickly. Curious to give Squarespace a try for yourself? I don't blame you. You can check out squarespace.com today for a free trial and use the URL squarespace.com slash Caitlin's Corner to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain when you're ready to launch. I'm also going to do the same folder technique in my Notion. I'm going to add a projects page. I already have an areas page, a resources page, and an archive. So some of these tabs, I'm just going to sort into those main four. Content calendar goes into projects. Books to read, I'm going to consider resources. Gear, resources. Holiday content 2022 can officially go into the archive because that's work I've already done. Lua is an area. Meetings are areas. Content calendars, projects. Media lists goes into resources. And there's that. I just cleaned up my Notion sideboard here. I'm still keeping my 2023 life dashboard and my work dashboard because those have their own organization system. They're kind of what I go to when I first go into Notion. I also love having easy access to my home operating manual and my life management manual, which this life management manual, I'm gonna have to keep refining and figure out a way to share with you because I found it so helpful, especially if we're keeping track of gifts for birthdays. It has come in clutch. I've also 
also been using it to keep track of my sick history when I get colds, how I've been feeling, just track all, all the things related to when I get sick because that's helpful information to look at in the in the future when I get sick again and I'm looking for the things that help me out. I just think this looks a lot cleaner so this makes me happy. When I first got this laptop I just made the desktop some blank peach screen and I gotta say it does not bring me any sort of joy anymore so I want to give it a little bit of spice something a little bit more visually interesting and I love going to Canva for desktop backgrounds because you can customize your background and make it a usable tool rather than just something pretty to look at. On Canva you just have to look up desktop wallpaper and you can kind of scroll until you see something that catches your eye. It doesn't have to be perfect which is the great part because you can make changes to it. This one right here kind of is working for me. And now I'm going to get customizing. So one of the things I don't need here is the calendar. Click all of that. Delete. I'm going to fix my box make some tweaks i really like daisies so i'm gonna see if there's a nice photo of daisies see if this one works and eh, no what about this no oh that's kind of cool that works for me before i even set this as my desktop wallpaper i'm gonna rename it desktop wallpaper and this can go into the resources tab i'll make a folder called wallpapers <laughs> set that as desktop picture oh it's too big let me quickly resize that. I love that the desktop wallpaper has now a designated section for all those folders or apps to kind of live. And it's just a little bit more visually interesting to look at than the peach blank screen. So I feel like this is more encouraging to keep me organized. I feel like that's the case with organization in general. It doesn't always have to look, you know, Pinterest worthy or perfect, but there has to be an element for me, at least personally, to be excited to use it. And that comes through the visual stimulation, whether it's in my physical environment, like my home, I like to find pretty things that I am excited to use because if I'm feeling excited to use it, it'll encourage me to stay consistent with those organization systems. But that also carries to my digital spaces as well. And desktop wallpapers and phone backgrounds and rearranging home screens, like that's the, the fun, spicy element, at least for me in terms of digital organization. That's what makes it exciting to do. Another fun thing to do is to change what the folders themselves look like. So if I open, a folder and I say get info, copy this camera PNG, I can just paste it and now my screenshots folder looks like a little camera. I'll do the same thing for screen recordings. Open the videos icon that I just downloaded from the internet, edit, copy. So we've copied the image and then I go to the folder and this little mini one at the top, I click until there's an orange outline and I just press paste. And look at that, it switched it, close all that close these. My folders look a little bit more exciting. Cute! I can't have a digital organization video without mentioning the importance of backing up your files, whether it's on a digital cloud software or onto actual hard drives. These are actually hard drives I use more to work off of, so anytime I have to edit a video or any sort of project, I do it on here. This is my old Samsung portable SSD T5. I still do use this. It's just only 500 gig. And this one, the new T7 Shield, also by Samsung that I got, is two terabytes. So I'm just able to do more projects on the go. I love working off SSD. It's very durable for when you're traveling around. There's no moving parts in these. So I just find that there's rarely issues that I have with footage going wrong. But for these hard drives, I'm definitely gonna be using this new para system, particularly the project and the areas section. Because when it comes to logging all of the footage that I take, I feel like it'd be really great to have sections of footage that I organize by what's in the content. So any cooking shots I can have in a folder. Any Toronto footage I can have in a folder. I find that's probably one of the things I don't do quite well with my video footage right now is organize it in a way that makes it easy to use that footage in future videos to reuse it whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, TikTok. There's so many ways to repurpose footage to give it a second life and whenever I want to do that I have to end up doing a lot of digging which takes up a lot of time obviously because you're just kind of on a wild goose hunt. Is that 
goose head goose chase so for anyone who does photos video i think this system can be so powerful for just making your workflow a lot more efficient i use my google calendar for everything but i particularly rely on it for work and managing all the deadlines and making sure i'm on top of things a couple years ago i actually customized my google calendar to look something like this i tried to make different categories for my calendar like work tasks personal tasks reminders content posting content that's to go live I tried to make it all in this green color different tones of green and I loved it for a time but now I just find everything on my calendar kind of jumbles together except those things like red deadlines that I have so I want to completely revamp my calendar look so that all the different categories are very distinct but my outlines should still very much so stand out i went onto pinterest and i'm currently just scrolling through a ton of color palettes until something stands out to me i feel like i need something happy to look at i adore the color green actually but it's just not giving me happy vibes right now when i look at my calendar i think with everything you get used to looking at the same thing for too long so you just need to switch it up the key is actually finding a post with hex code Some might work Let's see. That color really blends in with my content planning schedule. So this one I want to switch out. I'll make that yellow. Then all of my work tasks, I think I'll make the Be My Valentine. FBC, FC9. I'm going to make it a little less intense. Ooh, that's cool. 2E0. I like that. And then the purple needs to go as well. I think this looks so much better to me. It could be because this just looks different than what I had before, but I feel like this is so much better because it's so clear when something is just a regular work task when it's a batch work task when it's personal and i'll keep tweaking this but i like the variety of colors and i feel like this palette is really doing it for me i want to know what is the one area of your digital environment that you struggle the most with organizing maybe i can do a follow-up video where we dive into smart home organizing finance management i mean there's a whole plethora of categories we could deep dive into for me personally it's my inbox it is a little crazy right Right now there's thousands of emails that I apparently haven't read which sometimes is true I haven't read probably a good portion of those but there's also a good portion that I read and then mark as unread because I'm not sure what I want to do with it so I need to create some new habits with my inbox for sure thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video don't forget to click the link in the description box below to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain I'll see you all soon with a new video and until then bye guys